I'm gonna take it off. I've never done that before. Promise, did you just buy her? Yeah. I'm gonna break down what's happening in this video and show you how we can be more helpful next time. This video begins with older sister biting baby and mom is visibly triggered and understandably so. Now, many parents would see this two, three-year-old as a legitimate threat and use her survival state skills, which are fight, flight, fawn, and freeze as a reaction to this child's behavior. Many parents will even promote survival state skills like spanking a chancla, pinching, smacking to teach a child a lesson. But what we know is that we cannot learn when we're in a survival state. We cannot thrive when we're in a survival state. Now, this seems like a parent who's been doing some work, so she can probably calm down the survival state part of her brain. But where she gets stuck is the emotional state. Now, our emotional state is where our verbal reactions come from. This is where we have a tendency to get a little judgy. This is also where all the negative messaging that we received growing up starts to bubble back up and replay in the back of our mind, whether it's subconsciously or consciously. And that's why she reacts with this judgmental statement. Instead of reacting with, that wasn't kind, which is a judgment, we can respond with, ouch, biting hurts, which is usable information that will help us move towards problem solving. But you can tell this parent is really working hard to respond well. I mean, she's pausing, she's thinking about what she's going to say next, and she's starting to step into curiosity to figure out why sister bit baby. We do want to be aware of our body language and our tone because if they feel judged by us, it will shut down communication. And then we're creating another obstacle for us to get that very important information that we're trying to get. Why do they do this behavior? What were they hoping for? What were they wanting to get out of this behavior? That's important for us to know if we're going to help them solve this problem in a different way. She just gave us the answers to the test. Now that we know why she bit baby, we can transform that behavior and help her do something different. Now I could be wrong, but it sounded to me like she said she was trying to play with the baby's feet. So let's just use that as an example. First, let's reframe the problem. The problem isn't the child biting. The problem is the child wants to play with baby and she doesn't know how to do it. So you could say something like, you wanted to play with the baby's feet. You can wiggle his feet like this, or you can touch his toes like this. You choose, which one do you wanna do? Let's practice. And then help the child practice playing with baby. If we just react with our emotional or survival state skills, the child will never learn how to actually connect and play with the baby. And the child might choose to just not connect with baby anymore because every time they do, they get yelled at or they get hit. I do want to say kudos to this parent for this part because without any judgmental language, they're able to reach their child and help her do a little bit of perspective taking about how another person may have felt by their actions and helping them see the consequences of their actions. So shout out to that. Yeah, so can, you need to say sorry to Margot, don't you? Sorry, Now, the creator here says that she forces an apology. And while she does use some forcing language, when she says, you need to say you're sorry, she also ends it with, don't you? Which kind of leaves it up to the child. And honestly, I think this child was ready and willing to repair the relationship as best she could, whether it was something that was forced or something that was encouraged. So to me, this is not something that is a big deal, but it is great to see that this parent is aware of how she's teaching her children to repair. Hmm. You're not crying. You wouldn't like it if she bit you, would you? No. You need a cuddle to calm down. And it's not kind, is it? I think by the end of this video, this child is exhausted from mom pulling out of the emotional bank account with some of the judgmental statements that were made. And mom mentioned that being at school all day might be adding to her tiredness. And mom is sensitive to that. And she's recognizing that the child needs connection. And so she's giving the child connection through physical touch, through that cuddle. Some people are mad that mom hugs sister at the end of this video. And pretty much what they're saying is, if you give her a hug,
dog after she does something that doesn't meet your expectations. You're teaching her that she will still be accepted by you even when she doesn't do what you want her to do. And yeah, that's the point. <laughs> we want to communicate that you're safe, you belong, you're connected, you're understood so that they can learn new skills and solve the problem next time. But as this parent is so bravely showing you that this is a journey, it's not about being perfect. It's the process of learning how to use this part of your brain more instead of just using the bottom parts of your brain is a journey. It's a learning process. Mistakes are an essential part of the learning process and you can't get better without making mistakes. So thank you to this parent for being vulnerable and showing us this vulnerable moment so that we can all learn and grow from it and Remember, avoid being a perfectionist, be an improvenist. The goal isn't to be perfect every day. The goal is to improve a little every day.